throughout history, men have traditionally supported their families. But our next guest says, get ready for the big flip. This Monday says women will take over as breadwinners in the decades to come. Her new book, The Richer Sex Explorers, how that will transform our lives. Ms. Monday, welcome. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. So what's the consequence of this? Well, I think the consequences in the long term are going to be good. Mm -hmm. I think there's no question for women that earning more in their relationships gives them more power and more bar more bargaining power, mm -hmm. as the economists say, in their relationships. Men are doing more housework than they ever have. And I think the consequences... Say that part again. Men are doing yes. more housework than <laughs> yes. they ever have. Yes. They yes. really are. Yes. And for men also, there are going to be more options, more flexibility in life in terms of life choices, less pressure, hopefully, to take a job that they don't want to simply in order to support a family. I think men are going to have a, an array of new options so and more time with their families. Does that suggest no cultural or other kinds of resistance to this inevitability? Oh, I think there will certainly be cultural resistance and um, there's still a certain amount of stigma that couples face even when it's working out well for them in their relationships. Sometimes the in-laws aren't that happy. Mm -hmm. I interviewed husbands who were the secondary earner or su the supportive spouse and they felt a little stigmatized by their mm -hmm. parents their family yeah. Or the public. Let's. I want right. to pick up on that for a second because I have several friends who are in this situation. They said, look, we're happy. We're ha I'm happy. He's happy. It's only when we go out and we feel we have to explain unnecessarily so. And so how do you get around the judgment that people have? Take, take the in-laws out of it, just society in general. Well, and, and I, I interviewed a number of of young women who have developed strategies when they go out and are meeting men, they will um, try to downplay their earnings a little bit and say things like, oh, well, here's some movie tickets. They were giving them away at work, at work and they had yes. purchased them in advance. Or they would carry ones and tens uh, so that they could sort of discreetly pay for parking or pay for drinks or pay for tips without having it seem that they were paying. Sometimes women would lie. They would, they would minimize their profession and instead of saying that I'm a lawyer, say I'm a music teacher. But how can that make a guy feel good. Well, I don't think That's it does. What, yeah. And I think they're working harder than they need to because studies show that for men, when they rank traits in a marital partner that are desirable, earnings have gone way up in, in mm -hmm. men's estimation and domestic skills have really plummeted. Whereas women are, are quite a bit more interested in men who have domestic skills than they used to be. No, in her book, Charlie, she says she likes it, that women like a man who's good in bed and good at washing dishes. <laughs> You fall where? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Haven't Go ahead. washed dishes in a long time. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Touche. But here's the question. Okay. When, when was the last time you, you, okay. being a very successful single woman mm -hmm. with a huge paycheck, Mm -hmm. went out and... It's not that huge, but go ahead. <laughs> it could be huger, but go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I did that just to get the predictable no, understanding I feedback I would get. Okay. Uh, no, how, when was the last time you, for example, took a man out for dinner mm -hmm. and picked up the check? Mm -hmm. Most of the time, some of the time, almost never. For sure, some of the time, yeah. for sure. But not, and is there ever a problem, resistance no, at no, all? No, 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 and it's not because he can't afford it. It's just, it, it, to me, it depends on the nature of the relationship. Yeah. So. I, I have no trouble with picking up the check, none, none. But I think a lot of women feel that way. Right, although I, I think most women would be glad to pick up the check. I did interview women who said, you know, all I want is a nice dinner, yeah. right. and I, I'm not really fine <laughs> exactly. with paying. Yes. Yeah, exactly right. What about the message it sends to kids who are raised in households where dad is a stay-at-home dad and mom is working, what message does it send to them? I think it sends a mes message of flexibility and yes. options. Yeah. I interviewed adult young women of breadwinning moms. They were in sort of the early, first generation. They said, I want to be like my mom. She's, she's successful. Right. She's happy. They, they loved the attention they got from their fathers. I interviewed a young woman, Stephanie Hawkins, who said it was so cool when my dad picked me up from school and he was the only dad who was around and I bragged about it. And I interviewed a breadwinning woman, Rhonda McNally, who said, you know, my daughters are going to expect what they've gotten from their father. They're going to, yeah. He's really engaged. He's not a babysitter. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're going to mm -hmm. expect yes. from their husbands. This will be easier for the next generation, even easier so. for the generation that follows. Right. And men are not feeling lesser than. That's the point I think it's so important exactly. to make. Yeah. Men are feeling, I, I think, yeah. happy and, and proud Empowered. of their, their partners and, and, and like they have a new array of choices. And the children like see it. them as just two human beings who happen to be our parents and they both do everything. I like that. I like that. Thank you, Liza. Monday. Thank you. It was great to be here.